Welcome back to, ta-da, 3D printing. Okay, here we are on chapter 9A. This is the MK4 next extruder mod for the MMU3 for the MK4. That sounded like a lot. So now we've got the machine set up here. I've still got my directions because this is completely different than the last one that I did. And I did remove the power cord. It's completely unplugged, turned off, all that good stuff. This is actually not where I normally have it set up, but I'm gonna work on it here. This is difficulty, very difficult, steps 28. So step one, in this guide, we're going to modify the next extruder on your MK3.9 or MK4 to accommodate the MMU functionality. If you're using another printer, please switch to a different chapter. Unload filament from the printer, remove the spool holder. Make sure the extruder on your printer is in the middle of both the X and Z axis, which it is not. Wonder if I need to plug this back in and go a little higher. It's pretty close. We'll see if that's enough. Power off your printer and disconnect it from the power. Okay, so I jumped the gun a little bit on that. Step two, during the conversion of the next extruder to the multi-material version, you'll handle many parts that look similar but are different. We recommend setting aside a bag for spare parts to store components that won't be needed anymore. Well, I definitely have a bunch of extra bags at this point. I guess I'll use my safety sticker one because I will not mess that up and think it's anything else. All right, let's begin. Step three, we need some tools. Allen key, Torx key, needle nose pliers. I have them all in a mess over here. I'll just grab them as I need them. Remove, okay, step four. Remove the top love board cover from the extruder by pulling up. Open the idler swivel, swivel, yeah. Okay, so that is this here. Fully loosen the MK, or the M3 by 25 screws holding the gearbox cover. Leave the screws in place, do not remove them. So these screws here, there is a note that some versions have a fourth one here. Mine has three. Step five, remove the whole gearbox assembly from the next extruder. Jeez. Locate the metal washer that should be between the gearbox and the motor. It might be stuck to the gearbox assembly. All right, so I'm just pulling this thing off the front. I guess I didn't loosen enough. Okay, yeah, I'm loosening them a lot. Now I can pull this off. Locate the metal washer that should be between the gearbox and the motor. It may be stuck to the gearbox assembly. Oh, yep, there. So it's just like this super little tiny thing right here. All right. Reseat the washer on the motor shaft. Okay. The parts might be greasy. Clean off any excess grease. Yes, mine are definitely greasy. All right, better now. And we're gonna put that back on here. Step six, using the TX Torx key, remove the set screw. If you own the four screw version, the specific type of set screw is not included. So I have the three one, three screw version. So I need to remove the set screw here. Wow, everything wanted to move on that. 
and remove the idler. So I'm taking both of these things out. So let me. Okay. Remove the two M3 by 30 screws with the springs. So those are the ones up here, these two. and then remove the idler swivel assembly, which is what I'm holding in my left hand, I believe, which makes sense, because once these screws come out, this is gonna come apart. Okay, we're setting all these below. Step seven, next extruder disassembly. On top of the next router heat sink, there is a filament sensor assembly. We will need to remove it. Here. It's been a while since I put this together. Okay. Use the needle nose pliers, gently pull the filament sensor assembly out of the heat sink. Proceed very carefully. There is a spring and a very tiny ball that can fall out. I believe I was able to get it out with the ball. I don't see a spring, but I think there's a spring up inside if I remember correctly. And it says, this filament sensor assembly will not be used with the MMU, blah, blah, blah. It's recommended to store it in a spare parts bag. Oh, good, because as soon as I dropped it in there, that ball popped right out. Step eight, idler disassembly. We will need to take the idler assembly apart. So this is gonna be all of those things I took out, not as much on the machine, so let's change the view here. Here are all the parts we removed. We are looking for this. Remove the M3 by six screw. Okay, I don't even feel like this looks like it's still attached. All right, so we're gonna set that there. And take this whole thing apart. I feel like I need my skill. All right, we're gonna remove this screw here. I got that tight. Split the printed parts to open it up. Set aside for later use. All right, we're gonna take this apart. Set aside for later use the bearing pins, the bearings, pins, spacer, and the screw. The printed parts won't be reused. Okay, so take every, all of the hardware, all the metal off. And these can go in the bag. Step nine. New idler parts preparation. For the following steps, please prepare idler lever A, idler lever B, the new parts. So we have in this bag is the new parts. And I would imagine they look almost the exact same. That's why they want us to get rid of the other ones. Mm -hmm. These, we have two bearings that we removed, two pins that we removed, the 
spacer tube and the screw. It doesn't look like we need this guy right now. All right, I'm gonna move these things over. I don't get them mixed up with all the other parts we took. Step 10, take the new idler lever A part and insert the two pins into the corresponding openings. Looks like we are using the one with the larger hole on the left. And then these two is where we're putting the pins. Mount the bearings onto the pins. Don't lose the other pin in the process. Mm -hmm. Cover the assembly with the part B. Sandwich those together. Insert the spacer tube on the left where it is going to go all the way through. And then we're going to put the screw on the right where it's got a smaller hole in the back. All right, I think that one's good for now. The swivel disassembly, step 11. That's this. We'll need to take the swivel assembly apart. Using the T10 Torx key, remove the screws while you hold the nuts using the needle nose pliers. Okay. All right, so if you just use the key, of course it's going to spin. And just holding it's not enough. So, Disassembled. We are going to keep the N3NN nuts and spacer. The printed parts and the screws won't be reused. Step 12, idler nut FS parts preparation. So we need to get out of the new stuff another part. Idler nut FS, the new part. I'm just gonna get all of these out because. All right, we're looking for this one. These few can wait for a minute. and a magnet. There are two of these tiny magnets included in the package. Please separate them and use only one. The other magnet serves as a spare. Where are my magnets? Okay, so in this bag, the other bag, 
we've got two magnets. All right, I'm just gonna set that as it is for now. Step 13, arrange the either nut part as seen in the picture. Install the tiny three by one magnet into the marked opening on the idler nut and push it all the way in. Polarity doesn't matter. Okay. How there's two here, I just can't even believe. But sure enough, you can just barely see <laughs> oh, I got it too, and then I moved the part. You can see it's just setting there barely. I don't know how I'm gonna push it in because I feel like if I bump it, I'm gonna knock it right off. Oh yeah, that's gonna be fun with metal too because it wants to attach. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna push down and I don't know if I use one of these if I'm gonna mess. Okay, yeah. That's as far as I see it going in. I mean, from the side, I feel like it's still sticking up. Hmm. Step 14. For the following steps, please prepare. Is that the end of that? Yeah, okay. Please prepare. We have this guy still. And then we need the swivel B. And then we need swivel A, which is taller. We need the two M3 by M3N nuts that we removed the one spacer that we removed, and, and then two M3 by 22 screws. And there's a note that we have never used, we've never used this one, so don't reuse something previous. Okay, I keep looking through my fasteners and things, but no, it's gonna be in here. 2M3 by 22, it's in this bag. Thirty fives are in here too. All right. Step 15, take the swivel A, which is the taller one, and orient it as seen in the picture. Insert, scoot this up just a little bit. Insert the M3 by 20 screw into the opening near the thick part of swivel A. So we're gonna come in from the left. 
No, it doesn't go up there. It goes here. Slide the spacer onto the screw. Insert the second screw. place on the other side. Mm -hmm. Oops. And we're going to put this on it like this. Okay, so this part here, so we've got the magnet facing that way. We're going to slide that one to the lower part. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to flip it over this way. Nope. I don't think I have that right. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Like this. No. Man. All right, this is how it needs to look. We've got the magnet over here and the two screws spacer on this side. Make sure the magnet's still in place. I can see it. I think you can still see it too. Slide the swivel B onto the screws. Attach the M3N nuts onto the screws. Tighten the screws gently while holding the, the nuts using the needle nose pliers. Do not over tighten them. They need to still be able to move freely. Okay. Okay, seems like everything is still movable. Snug, not gonna fall off, but they look good. And be careful with your pliers because that magnet really wants to jump out of there. Step 17, tension screw parts preparation. We're probably gonna really hear my shed start to pop because it's getting a little warmer outside and it's in Texas. So it does that every time that it gets nice and sunny and hot outside, my shed starts to pop. All right, for the following steps, please prepare M3 by 30 screws with the springs that we removed earlier. I don't think we're using that anymore right now. Or the bag yet. We will need the springs alone. The old M3 by 30 screws won't be reused. And now we need to grab out of here. Okay, so out of this bag. Maybe grab those M3 by 35 longer screws. and a screw guide, which was in this guy that was in this bag. The only thing that left that I have of printed parts is this guide. Step 18, take the new screws, make sure you have the M3 by 30, not the M3 by, no, 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 make sure you have the 35, not the 30. Push them onto the screw guide first. Don't lose your springs. Oh, well, mine aren't pushing through. It 
They, this looks interchangeable. I don't think it matters which way you have it. And then put the springs on. Now we'll set that aside and now we're working on the gearbox. Take the gearbox assembly and split it apart. Guess I need to remove these screws more. Clean off any excess grease. Ugh. Okay, this that second picture shows me taking this out too. Oh, okay. mess at the same time. Set aside for later use. PG cover, this, yes, we're keeping this, okay. Okay, so we're keeping everything except this, the printed main plate, not the one, the one that doesn't have a logo on it. Still keeping, we're still keeping this. Okay, so that one's going in the bag. And we're going to grab the new part. Step 20. I don't know. We're setting these ones aside to use in a minute. Like this might be the next step, but we'll see. So step 20, main parts preparation. We need out of this bag, the main plate. Make sure it's the new one. Do not reuse the old one. Okay, so we need the new plate and an O-ring. See if these are both in here or not. Okay, so one of these is a spare. That's a little confusing. And I need an O-ring which it's not in that little bag, but it's in this bag. And it looks like there's two of these as well. Okay, this is cool. Right. O-ring. Step 
2021, there is a V-shaped groove on the inside of the large round opening on the new main plate. Insert the O-ring into the groove. Make sure it is seated properly. Okay, there is a groove here. Okay, I think I got it in there. It doesn't seem like it's showing on either side. Twenty-two. Now we need everything back together. We need M3 by 25 set screw. Oh yes, I do still have that. But I put it aside because I don't think they ever talked about it. I think that's this. That came off the machine. So this is only if you had the four screw option, which I do. No. If you own the four screw, this is not included. I have the three, so yes, that is the correct part. Tension screw assembly, that's this, with the springs. Swivel assembly is this. the idler assembly, the main plate, and the PG assembly. Step 23, add the idler assembly onto the extruder. Fix it in place using the M3 by 25 set screw. So we're gonna take the idler, turn it this way and put it back. And I guess I'm gonna need that key again. Okay. Oh, I did not do that right. You've got to slip it down. I just put it on the front and that's not going to work. Got to slip it down. Oh, and I think the other problem I was trying to figure out if this was going to be centered or not. It felt like it was on one side. I felt like the picture showed it just like laying flat. So I am going to try it to be flat towards the machine because then it's gonna sit a little closer. So I think that was some of my problem too, is that I can like slip it in now before it was sitting in front of this part. Now it's sitting with that in the middle and then I can put the screw in. Okay. That'll work. Now add the swivel assembly onto the extruder. The protruding part of the idler nut FS component should fit inside the filament sensor pocket in the heat sink as seen in the picture. So, we need to go with the magnet towards the machine. I do still have the magnet on the right and we're going to stick the magnet in that space. Okay, I should have my mic working now. So, we just put the part here and then now we are going to attach our screws without dropping the springs. So, step 24, next extruder assembly part extruder assembly 
insert the tension screw assembly through the heat sink and direct, direct it towards the swivel assembly. So that's this. Tighten the tension screws gradually one at a time until the ends of the screws are fully flush with the surface of the idler nut part on the opposite side as shown in the picture. That looks pretty good. You can just see a little bit of silver, but it's not like I'm gonna catch that back one. I might back up just a little bit more. But I shouldn't be catching, yeah. Okay. Step 25. Attach the main plate assembly to the extruder, ensuring the protruding parts fit correctly into the heat sink. The notch in one of the corners is designed to fit over the idler spacer set screw. So, we've got this part, and this is what needs to fit over the screw. Well, that's a little weird. Okay, so there's also a notch on this side, so I've got the set, set screws here. There's also a notch here that needs to slip into where the filament sensor was as well. Okay. Cool. Ensure the lever on the swivel assembly fits correctly into the cutout on the main plate. Attach the PG assembly to the motor shaft. Be very careful. When inserting the assembly into the opening with the O-ring, watch out for any deformation or damage to the O-ring. Ensure the O-ring stays properly seated in its groove on the main plate. A slight wiggling motion can assist with this. And then again, we have another warning. Watch out for any de deformation or damage to the O-ring. Okay. So, we've got this thing, PG assembly, that we need to slip in and wiggle. Yeah, okay. I mean, it was a little snug, but wiggling worked. And I feel like it's, hmm, I need to go back a little more. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I still had it sitting out. It needs to go as flush as possible. This needs to actually be inside. Okay, step 26, gearbox assembly parts preparation. For the following steps, please prepare PG assembly adapter. That's the last printed part or plastic part. And the PG ring, which we took off. M3 by 25 screws, three or four the PG case assembly, okay? Step 27, attach the adapter to the PG assembly, making sure the spur gears are correctly aligned and fit snugly into the pockets on the adapter. All right, so this guy kind of looks like they have the little label facing on the bottom. All right, make sure it sits flush. Note there's a camphor, okay, no. Second thing is carefully slide the PG ring onto the adapter, pushing it all the way in gently until it locks onto the gears. Note there's a camper on one side of the PG ring. This side should be facing the gears while inserting the PG ring. All right, I am just so excited to find the camper on this again. Okay, this side is flat 
and this side you can see just barely but there's a camphor so this side needs to go toward the machine and we'll slip it over this and onto the gears until it locks onto the gears some more wiggling I got one side, the other side does not want to go in. I might not have this perfectly straight. Okay, I think that's better now. Gently rotate the adapter while sliding the PG ring onto the gears to align the gearbox properly. Remove the adapter. Okay, you want me to remove the adapter and get to the next step. For real? Remove the adapter while holding the gearbox in place and then... Check the PG ring for adequate lubrication. If necessary, apply a slight amount of grease similar to the procedure for the MK kit. This does not want to work. Cover the gearbox using the PG case. Secure the case using the M3x25 screws. Do not over tighten the screws. All right. It would be nice if these screws kind of slipped in. There we go. Attach the top love board cover back onto the extruder, this guy. I feel like I do this wrong. Okay. And that is the very end. We have finished this chapter. We've modded the extruder on the MK4. So the next step, the next chapter is going to be attaching the MMU to the printer. Thanks for watching.